subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Astronomers have observed and detected for the very first time a planet outside of our Milky Way galaxy. This is the first time we've actually observed an extra galactic planet and the discovery was made by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. In this video, we'll talk about how this particular planet was discovered, how exoplanets are generally discovered and what this discovery means for the future of exoplanet hunting. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The term exoplanets is a contraction of extrasolar planets, which are obviously planets that lie outside of our solar system. The very first time astronomers possibly observed one through a telescope was during the First World War, but of course it was never confirmed or even thought to be an exoplanet. The very first detection that was suspected to be an exoplanet was in 1988 and the very first that was confirmed was in 1992. The first definitive detection of an exoplanet was made in 1995 and the astronomers from the University of Geneva won the 2019 Nobel Prize in Physics for it. Until the 90s, we were not really sure how many more planets were there outside of our solar system. We knew there were billions of stars and of course we understood enough physics to know that there will be billions of planets but we weren't able to confirm if all the stars had planetary systems. However, today we have identified over 4,800 individual exoplanets outside the solar system belonging to various star systems and we also have almost an equal number of candidate exoplanets which need confirmation with more observations. And now we know that there are way, way, way more planets than there are stars and many of them can be and are possibly Earth-like. A large part of our knowledge of exoplanets and in fact our entire exoplanetary database itself comes from the Kepler Space Telescope. NASA's Kepler Space Telescope was launched in 2009 and it was equipped with only one payload, an instrument called a photometer that monitored for variations in the brightness of stars in large patches of the night sky. We'll come to why variations in a bit, but this space telescope was designed to discover Earth-like exoplanets or those exoplanets that orbit or their stars' habitable zones. The Kepler Space Telescope operated for nine years before running out of fuel and it observed over 500,000 stars. It detected a total of 2,662 exoplanets before retiring in 2018. Its successor is the TESS Telescope or the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite which also belongs to NASA. This was launched in 2018 and it is still operational. TESS was launched to study the brightest stars near us and it has identified over 100 confirmed exoplanets and over 2600 candidate planets. In fact, Kepler and TESS put together have identified nearly 5000 exoplanets that are Earth-like and in the habitable zone and around a Sun-like star but which need confirmation of their planetary status. These are all candidate planets. And these planets are detected in similar ways. There are many ways that exoplanets can be detected by. The easiest and the most commonly used method is the transit method, where a planet moves in front of a star while in its orbit, and as it does so, the star's brightness is dimmed ever so slightly and this can be observed and recorded as a dip in the star's luminosity. As this process repeats, we can tell the orbital period of the planet around the star and the planet's size, not mass. The limitation of course here is that we can only see planets whose orbital plane is directly between us and its star, so this method restricts millions of galaxies from view but nonetheless, this method has yielded thousands of planets anyway. Another popular method is called the radial velocity method. 
when one body orbits another, it is actually two masses orbiting around a common center of mass called the barycenter. As we know, any two masses will exert gravitational force on each other inversely proportional to the distance. In systems where one mass is much, much, much higher than the other, like the sun and earth or a star and a planet, the barycenter lies inside the body of the star. As a mass, a planet goes around the star, the planet pulls ever so gently on the star just like the star tugs at the planet too. This causes a wobble in the star's motion in the sky and this can be observed by us. Using a very simple formula, we can calculate the orbital period and the mass, not size, of the planet that is orbiting the star. From the mass, we can typically tell the density and thus what material the planet is likely made of. Is it rocky? Is it a gas giant? And so on. This system also has its limitations and it makes more massive planets easier to detect than less massive ones, the ones that are lower in mass than Neptune or even Earth. There are many other newer methods of detecting exoplanets now. We can look at things like gravitational lensing, for example, where a planet's gravity bends the light of a star behind it, causing it to look distorted. This is in fact how we discovered the planet orbiting a white star this year, a few pure science videos ago. The problem with observing different planets from so far away is that there is a natural bias towards larger data with noticeable effects. So we typically tend to find planets that are really big, very massive and orbit very close to their host stars. These tend to be planets that are commonly described as hot Jupiters. Our nearest exoplanet is the one that orbits our nearest star, which is Proxima Centauri. This newly discovered exoplanet is located in the spiral galaxy Messier 51, M51, a very popular object to look at through the telescope for amateur astronomers. The galaxy is also called the Whirlpool Galaxy because of its appearance. It is located about 28 million light years away, which is thousands and thousands of light years away from the planets that we've already discovered within our galaxy outside of our solar system. The detection itself was still made with the transit method, but using the Chandra telescope, which is an X-ray telescope that is used to detect high energy X-rays from various parts of space. The telescope is actually named after the astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar, who determined the maximum mass stars can reach before they explode or collapse into a compact object, specifically a white dwarf. So the team at Harvard looked for dips in X-ray brightnesses instead of visible light. They look specifically at X-ray binaries, which, as the name suggests, are stars which are binaries or two stars orbiting each other. In such a system, one of the stars typically is a compact object, which is a neutron star or a black hole. And this body is then pulling material and mass from an orbiting companion star. As the material from this companion star nears the neutron star or black hole, it starts to become really hot and starts glowing in X-ray. The binary system this planet was discovered in is called M51 ULS1 and it contains either a black hole or a neutron star which is being orbited by another star which has a mass of about 20 times that of the Sun. The astronomers calculated from the light curve that the size of the planet is similar to that of Saturn's and it orbits the compact object, the neutron star or the black hole at a distance that is twice the distance between the Sun and Saturn. X-rays are not like visible light, they are high energy beams, so they come from a smaller origin spot and are directional most often. So when a planet transits in front of a star, the origin spot for the X-rays is very small. So the dip in X-rays is actually much more noticeable than it is with visible light. In fact, X-ray emissions can even cease completely when a planet is transiting in front of the star. This gives us a huge advantage if we want to hunt for more extragalactic exoplanets. 
Another great advantage in astronomy is recovery or going back into archival data and digging out old survey images and data with which we can now discover objects in retrospect. This M51 planet still needs to be confirmed and if it does get confirmed, it will become the very first observation and confirmed discovery of an extragalactic planet. As our methods for detecting exoplanets keep improving, with the new ones offering much more hope for our alien hunting processes of the future, we are not only expected to find more and more planets, but hopefully soon, smaller and less massive planets even ones that are the size of Mercury in our lifetimes.